If you were here 11 years ago, then bear with me. But if you're like me, you might have forgotten most of it. So we need reminding after 11 years. But if you weren't here, this will be a blessing to you. But as always, God um, takes me through this and, and begin to rewrite and redo and cut out. And, and, and so I pray this will bless you. Psalm 105, verse 16. Psalm 105 and verse 16. Please, Brother John, give me plenty of volume and I can back off. I've been struggling with my, my voice, my vocal cords. And uh, just a little bit down, just a tad there, and there you go, wonderful, perfect, amen. Praise God. Uh, Psalm 105, and let's look at verse 16. It says, Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He brake the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. Listen to this. The word of the Lord tried him. That's tested him, tried him. The word of the Lord tested him or tried him. That is Joseph. Amen. Praise God. I want to minister this morning. And I'm glad that you're here. And I pray this will bless you and help you and touch you on this thought. Seasons of betrayal. Seasons of betrayal. Would you pray with me, please? Father God, as we come to you in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this church, the body of Christ, the opportunity, God, to stand behind this sacred desk. And I pray for your unction. And I pray for the anointing of God. Father, I pray that we would not be resistant towards you, towards the Holy Spirit, not resistant toward the Word of God, but, Lord, we would open our hearts and receive of you, that you would touch us, that you would change us, that you would conform us into your image, that your will would be done. Also, God, that you would heal and deliver every person, every child of God, I pray, asking in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated this morning. Again, I'd like to minister on the thought or the subject of seasons of betrayal. The sanctifying work of God is a continual work in our lives. We call it progressive sanctification. The moment that we are saved, God places you and I on a journey. This journey sometimes can be difficult. Sometimes the path that God places us on can be very hard. We don't get to choose the trial. We don't get to choose the path. We don't get to choose the method of sanctification. But as Paul said, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Joseph went through a very difficult time in his life. Many years of hardship. But in all of that, God had a plan and a purpose for Joseph. And God has a plan and a purpose for you as well. We must remember that whatever journey God may place us on, He is there to help us through it. He knows exactly what He is doing. And in the process of this journey, God is perfecting his children and preparing them for things ahead. So remember that God is perfecting and God is preparing. You can say that with me. God is perfecting and God is preparing. In every trial and every hardship and every difficulty, God is perfecting me and God is preparing me. And that's Joseph. Joseph would find himself passing through seasons of betrayal. But even though he would find himself being portrayed, God was with him in in hardships, in pain, in discouragements, in difficult times. The Lord was with him, although it did not look like it, although it did not feel like it, although it seemed like God was a million miles away, yet the Bible says that God was with him, and that's what God is trying to teach you and I, not to live by what it looks like, not to live by feelings, not to live by circumstances, but live by what 
God's word says. And God's word says, although the circumstances did not indicate it, that God was with this young man. God was working in his life and God was preparing Joseph to be a vital instrument that would help save the people of God. And so God has a future purpose. Amen. So where you are right now is where you are right now. But God has a future purpose in all of us. The scriptures tell us uh, that there was a famine. God caused a famine to take place. Uh, Psalm 105 verse 16. Moreover he called for a famine in the land. He destroyed all the provision of bread. And so we know that during Joseph's time that there was a great famine. There was a lack of food and supply. There was a lack of substance. Now let's take a moment and let's talk about this famine. See, Jacob and his descendants were in the land of Canaan. That's the land of promise that God had given. The promise of God to Abraham was that from his seed, God would make and form and create a great nation. A nation that was still a work in progress. And God would somehow have to move Jacob to Egypt to preserve the nation of Israel during the famine. Because it was in Egypt that Israel grew in number and they were there for about 430 years. And I know that some theologians and commentators have some discrepancy about the number of years that Israel was in Egypt, but it seems to be about 430 years. Nothing to lose your salvation over, believe me. But God called a famine. He created a famine that created a hunger, which in turn caused Jacob to look for food, which later led him to Egypt. And sometimes God will cause a famine to stir the hearts of people to hunger after Him. I believe this is what God is beginning to do right now. There is a famine. There is a famine for spiritual truths today. Amos 8 and 11. Behold, the days are coming that I'll send a famine on the land. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. See, God said that He would create a famine. There's a famine for the Word of God. And people are beginning to become hungry. There's a stirring taking place in hearts that simply want God. They want the truth. And it's the truth that will set them free. See, I believe that we're getting to this place. We're tired of the, the self-gospel. We're tired of the, 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 the man-centered gospel. We're tired of the false doctrine. We're tired of the dogma. We're tired of the tickling of the ears. Can I get an amen there? We're tired of the tricks and tired of the flesh and psychology. Uh, they're tired of man-made religion. Uh, they're tired of scandals. Uh, they're tired of it all. Even though the devil's motive is for destruction, God is using this famine to stir the hearts of men and women. There's a hunger coming back. Hallelujah. Uh, I mean, little by little it's coming. I, I see the hunger coming and some of our young people and how refreshing it was to be able to go down to IYC and to see all those youngins, uh, all those young people, all those teenagers uh, that were worshiping God and praising God and hungry for the Word of God. It was wonderful. It's encouraging. But there are people that are hungry for God. Hungry for truth. Hungry for the Holy Ghost. They they want the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And we have people in our congregation that are hungry for that. They want the Holy Ghost. Uh, praise God. It is coming. God always has a remnant people. Amen. A remnant is a piece of the original. God is stirring a hunger in the hearts of His people for truth. For something that's real. Something that will penetrate the heart. For something that will speak and change them. They're looking for something that is real. And God will cause a famine to stir the hearts of people to create a hunger. So there's a purpose for this famine. A hunger for a deep spiritual truths that will change a nation. 
Oh God, create a famine that we will once again hunger after you. See, most of us know the story of Joseph. We know that Joseph was the son of Jacob and Jacob loved Joseph more than all of his other children and that did create a little bit of a problem. Jacob even had a uh, made a coat of many colors and had given it to him and, and this coat marked a distinct contrast compared to the other tunics that were worn by Joseph's brothers and it represented a position of special favoritism and special honor with his father and because of Jacob's love for Joseph it created a jealousy within the circle of the other brothers now a jealousy that created within that circle a bitterness an envy a a strife contention Uh, People have killed and murdered because of jealousy. Saul is a good example of this, who was jealous over David and tried to kill David, enraged with jealousy. It was eating him up alive on the inside. Now, Now bear with me here for a moment. At the age of 17, Joseph had a dream. And in this dream, God began to reveal to Joseph a little glimpse of the future. It wasn't a dream to brag about to others. And and we have to be careful when God shows us something. And God may reveal some things. And I'm at the age where I just don't remember what I dream. But there are times when I wake up and I know it was God. I know the Lord was preparing me. I know God was showing me something. I know it was of God. Something in the spirit world God was revealing to me. Sometimes it's best that we don't tell others our dreams because they won't understand and and they might take it wrong. This dream wasn't to brag about to his family, to his brothers, but rather God simply wanted to prepare Joseph for what was ahead. Now, now listen, the hand of God was upon this young man. God was going to use him to help protect Jacob's family in Egypt of Israel. Joseph didn't know all this at the time, but God began to reveal a little glimpse, a little piece of the puzzle, if you will. You see, God will not show us everything at once because it would be too overwhelming. We would not be able to handle that. And so God will begin to reveal a little bit in your life, a little puzzle, a little glimpse, a little something here and there. Whatever God's will, whatever God's plan, God will begin to show you, but He will not tell you everything that's going to happen in that plan. And I think about the call of God in my life and when God began to deal with my heart, And I'm glad that God didn't reveal everything to me. It would have been way too much for me to understand. It would have been overwhelming. But God began to reveal to Joseph. And He showed him in a dream. And Joseph's life would not be easy. And it would be a very difficult journey. Now listen, it would be hard. And and, and sometimes the path that God has us on might be difficult. Listen to me, church. Sometimes it's hard when I, when I look at my life, when I, when I look at the call of God, when I look at the ministry, and, and I never knew that ministry could be so hard. I never knew that following the will of God for my life can be so hard. Sometimes it's not easy. The journey might be trying, challenging, it could be Demanding it might be hard and some journeys can be very painful. Some have it easier than others and we don't know the path that God has for us. But for Joseph, this was the will of God. God would lead Joseph on a difficult path, a painful journey. But understand the journey that God had Joseph on was necessary. And come on now. The journey was necessary in the respect that before Joseph could be a great leader, he would have to endure great sufferings. In God's economy, suffering precedes glory, and being a servant precedes being a ruler. Not many get this, and if they do get it, it's difficult for them to remember it. First Peter 5 and 10 He said, after you have suffered a while. Amen. Can you say suffered a while? 
How many said, been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, amen? After you have suffered a while, then it says, perfect, this is God's will, perfect you in that, establish you in that suffering, strengthen you, and settle you. And God is trying to settle people. To trust Him, to not run, to not flee, to not fly, but to trust God through everything. I've been through this so many times myself. We go through these valleys of suffering. You have those that want to be a leader. They want to be in control or in charge of something, but they haven't learned how to be a servant. A great leader must learn to be a great servant and to serve God and, and to serve others and, and to be humble before the Lord. People want the glory of God. They want the blessing of God. But many are not willing to endure suffering for it. They're not willing to let it cost them something. They don't want to sweat for it spiritually. They don't want it to, they don't want to be inconvenienced. And for what God was preparing Joseph for, there had to be a refining, there had to be a purge. There had to be a preparing. There had to be a dying to self and of the flesh, which is the most difficult thing to do, but possible through Jesus Christ. But most today would look at Joseph's life and they would think, oh, how unfair it was. But this was the path that God had chosen for him. And even though the devil would use this for his destruction, God would turn it around for his good. It's not over till God says it's over. All things work together for good to them that are called, to them that love God. Amen. God is working and orchestrating. Even though we might not see the hand of God, even though we don't understand the hand of God, even though we don't understand the will of God, but yet God was orchestrating all of this together for his perfect will. Joseph endured things most people couldn't bear to go through. But as a Christian, God may call us on a journey that might not be easy. And maybe you're there right now. Maybe you're in the middle of it. And on this journey, as you serve the Lord, there may be times when you will go through seasons of betrayal. You might have to walk a path that's not easy. But just remember that in it all, that God is sovereign and God is working in your life to prepare you for His glory. Now we can follow follow God and we can yield ourselves to God or we can buck against God or we can buck against His will or we can buck against the Holy Ghost. Does anybody know what I'm talking about here today? You can resist. Sure, God gives us. We have a will. We are a free moral agent. God will not touch your will and and God will not force you to serve Him or, or to follow Him or to yield to Him. And many times we can push against God or the Holy Ghost. It could be that God is preparing you for some great work that he has for you ahead. Before Joseph could be the man that God was preparing him to be, he had to go through these seasons of betrayal. Now these seasons are probably one of the most difficult and painful paths to walk, yet it must be done. It is hard. Let me tell you, my friend, it is hard. Of many things that I've experienced in trials and hardships, this would be one of the most difficult. We know that Joseph was betrayed by his own brothers, by his own kin, by his own family, his own blood, as they threw him into the pit and sold him to the Midianites, who in turn sold Joseph to Potiphar in Egypt. And while under Potiphar's rule, Joseph did everything right. And you see in the Bible that God promised prospered him. The Lord blessed the work of his hands and, and he even blessed Potiphar's house because there was a Christian in there. Listen to me. There's a note to say on that. You might be the only light in a dark place. You might be the only Christian in that workplace. But listen to me. You just let that light shine. I believe that God will even prosper businesses because of the Christian they have hired to work there. Hallelujah. It's a blessing. He blessed Potiphar's house. The Lord was with him, but later Joseph, uh, 
Later, Joseph would be betrayed by Potiphar's wife who tried to cause Joseph to commit ungodly acts of sin and she would lie about him and falsely accuse him and slander his name. Isn't that the devil for you, church? Isn't that the devil? And he's the accuser of the brethren. You're just trying to serve God. You're trying to keep your nose out of everybody else's business. You're just trying to live holy, live righteously. Oh, but the devil doesn't like that and so he'll cause people to lie about you and to slander your name and to make up all kinds of falsehoods and things like that. But Joseph would flee from this. Joseph would then be betrayed by Potiphar who wouldn't believe his story. He'd be thrown in prison for years. And Joseph would even be betrayed by the chief butler who forgot about him after he was restored back to position with Pharaoh. For years it seemed that Joseph experienced nothing but betrayal. For years Joseph wouldn't see his family. For years he wouldn't see his father Jacob. For years he had to deal with the betrayal and the rejection and wrestle with what his brothers had done to him. Don't Tell me that was easy. Don't pass over this thing as if it's nothing. It was hard. For some 13 years, Joseph had to live and wrestle with this. And there's no doubt that Joseph would endure tremendous suffering. We don't like to suffer. I'll be honest with you. No one that I know likes to suffer. I don't like to suffer. Uh, uh, you don't like to suffer. But there is something about suffering. And that is suffering is a doorway to a better way to know Christ. Get that. Suffering is a doorway to and to better know Christ, it is a doorway to know God. It's in your brokenness. It's in your suffering. It's in your sorrow. God comes and draws near to the brokenhearted. I have had tremendous times in my life where I was broken and hurting, weeping and crying. And God would draw so close to me. And I would sense His presence and the Lord would minister to me through His Word like never before in that place of suffering, in that place of brokenness. Yes, you see, it's in these times that there is something that yearns deeply within our hearts that cries out to God in a way that wouldn't happen otherwise. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, young people, maybe you haven't experienced this yet in your journey with God, but there comes a time when it seems that everything comes against you in your, your workplace or your, your job or your family or even your own children that might turn against you. And that's painful. And, and David went through that when Absalom had, had turned against his own father and tried to usurp authority and tried to take over the kingdom. There's something within these times of betrayal and difficulties that cries out deep within our hearts. Sometimes we wonder why God is allowing this to happen to us. Why, God, are you allowing me to suffer? Why are you putting me through this? Why through the fire? Why am I going through this hardship? Why does it always have to be so hard? Why the hurt? Why the pain? Why the suffering? But we don't see it as God sees it. And, and God says, you're, you see just the now. You're, you're living in just the present. But God says, I am trying to work something so deep in you. I'm trying to do something in you that will change you forever. I am going to reveal my glory. I'm going to reveal my son. I'm going to reveal my presence to you. And I'm going to work something deep inside of you. And so that later you're going to be used for my purpose. It could be that God is using it for you to learn to depend upon Him. It's a tool. 
It could be that God is using it so that you'll come to Him, so that you will trust Him, to yearn within your heart, to long to be in His presence, and to find only comfort in God. Torrance Nash put out a quote on Facebook that said, The trial you're facing right now was not allowed by the Lord to destroy you, but to teach you how to depend upon Him and not self. And can I get an amen out of that? Amen. See, Joseph would have to experience this. He would have to endure through it. And likewise, it would only be in the Lord that Joseph would find comfort because even though all this happened to Joseph, the Bible says that the Lord Lord was with him. You see, my beloved, God was with him even in the most difficult times of his life, whether it appeared like it or not. As God was with the disciples in the middle of that storm, Jesus was right there in the boat. They thought they were going to die. They thought they were going to drown. They thought the boat was going to sink. But let me tell you something. The king of all kings was right there in the midst of them, in the boat with him. Hallelujah. And God was with Joseph in the same manner. Sometimes we think that because we're experiencing difficulties, that God is not with us. <laughs> but that's just not the case. Even though Joseph was experiencing betrayal and rejection and false accusations, God was with him. And my beloved, let me encourage you today, God is with you. If you are born again, if you trust God, if you'll put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. God is with you in the fire. He's with you in the water. He's with you in the trials. He's with you in the troubles. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the river, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor the flames scorch you. No, my beloved, that word tells us that God is with you. Hallelujah. God is with you. All right, now, let's get it real. Here I am. I didn't do anything wrong. God gives me a dream. It all started with that dream. And then I shared it with my family. Next thing I know, my brothers throw me in a pit. What did I do to them? And then what they do? They sold me to a man, uh, to the Midianites. The Midianites. And then they sold me to Potiphar. And then I worked at Potiphar's house. Here I am working. Well, it's a little bit better here, but I still don't know what I did wrong. And then he gets lied about. Next thing you know, nobody believes him. He has done nothing wrong. And now he's in the slammer. And he's sitting there in jail. And and someone comes up to him and says, Listen, buddy, I want you to know, I know you've been through a lot, but, but God is with you. <laughs> what did you say? Don't say it again. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, son, that God is with you. <laughs> I'm going to kill him. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, your circumstances are a mess. You're just trying to serve God. You're just trying to be obedient to the Lord. You're just trying to do what God told you to do. And now you find yourself in the middle of a jail. You've done nothing wrong. And yet you're telling me that God is with me. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. God is with me. Say it, saints. God is with me. Hallelujah. But suffering is a doorway that leads to a better way to know Christ. You see, understand this. I, I know our thinking is a little different these days. But, but the early saints considered it an honor to suffer for Christ. They considered it a joy. They gloried in it. Colossians 1.24 I now rejoice in the sufferings for you. In my sufferings for you. 2 Timothy 1.8 But share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Suffer for the gospel? Let me ask you this. Are you suffering for the gospel? Say, every time you take tithe, pastor, I'm suffering. (laughs) Yeah, to some people it is. To some people it's a joy. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, think about this. 1 Peter 4 and 13. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings. Today we don't want sufferings. But back in New Testament times, suffering for Christ was an honor. And it was considered fellowship with Jesus. Hmm. All right, I'm hurrying. Like Torrance Nash said, I, 
I, I got to hurry. I don't know why, but I got to hurry. <laughs> When Jesus was about to be crucified and take on the sin of the world, he asked his disciples this question. Are you willing to be baptized with the same baptism? Do you remember that in the Bible? He asked them this question. Are you willing? Now think about this. Are you willing to be baptized with the same baptism? In other words, are you able to drink of the cup that I'm about to drink? See, in other words, you want this great You want this authority. You want to rule. But are you willing to suffer? Are you willing to go through betrayal? Are you able to endure rejection and ridicule, persecution, hardships, and agony? Are you able to drink of the same cup? Are you willing to get to this place to where the power of God can flow through your life? Hallelujah. Are you willing to lay it all on the line for Christ? Are you willing to suffer the sufferings that Christ suffered? Are you able to be baptized with the same baptism? You want to be in leadership? You want the power of God in your life? You want to see God move mightily? But are you willing to drink of the same cup? Are you willing to walk through seasons of betrayal? We don't mind being Christians. We just don't want to suffer for it. We don't mind serving God. But we don't like the agony of Christian growth. That's the problem. We, 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 it's easy to be a carnal Christian. It's easy to just sit there on the surface and go through the routine of things that God is concerned about the heart. And this is what's happening today. Even at Word of Life, we can go through the, the religious motion and routine of things without the Spirit, without God, with, we can just stay on the surface. It's so much easier there than it is to dig down deep into the soil. I, I didn't enjoy digging out that foundation for that garage. I mean, that was hard. I, I mean, I, I remember when Brother Tim, and I met him out here one afternoon. I, I said, Brother, can I, can I help you in anything? He said, yeah, grab a shovel, take that rock and start spreading. And i got to go do some things. Brother Tim, that was hard. I mean, at first, a few couple scoops, you know, wasn't too bad. But, but after an hour, an hour and a half, blisters getting on my hands and it's hot and I'm sweating out there. That's not so easy. We don't like that part of Christianity. We like to play the game. We like the image. I wish I could preach today. Listen to me, my beloved. When we are betrayed, it's a trial like none other. It's a pain that almost is like none other. It, some have been betrayed by their own families. Betrayed by your own son. Betrayed. Betrayed by co-workers that turned against you because you're a Christian. Friends, loved ones, spouse, even people in the church. And, and people say, well, I'm not going to church anymore because I got hurt in church. Well, you got hurt at work, but you still go to work. Listen to me. Someone is going to hurt you. I'm going to be hurt. You're going to be. I understand all of that. But I also want to make it very clear. Even though I love you and even though you're not perfect and I'm not perfect, I serve a perfect God. Amen. And listen to me. Your actions do not do not tell me who my God is. He is Lord. He is God. He is he is almighty. And he's the one that died for me, saved me, delivered me. He's the one coming back for me for a church without spot or wrinkle washed in the blood of the lamb. I look to God. I come to worship God, not you. I come to praise God, not you. I come to glorify God, not you. Okay? <laughs> Amen. Ah, oh, do I need to continue on with this? Some have been betrayed by people that they've trusted. For some, it seems that life has betrayed them. You've experienced a pain and a hurt like never before. It's a pain that doesn't go away easily, nor does it go away quickly. You want it to. You try. 
You pray. You cry out to God. And it lingers. You've made up in your own mind that you're never going to let that happen again. You're never going to allow yourself to become vulnerable. Come on now. I'm going to preach a little bit here. You've never again are going to allow yourself to become close to anyone within the church body because you've been hurt before, but it won't happen again. You just won't have friends. Instead of walking through seasons of betrayal, you're standing behind the gates. You refuse to walk through it. You refuse to allow yourself to suffer. You refuse to allow God to bring you to this point. It's just easier to be a recluse. And I know because I've been there. If I could just hide, if I could just get away from it all. I've told my wife many times, I just want to find me some kind of deserted island in the Caribbean. Give me a Diet Coke and a nice chest and leave me alone. Amen. You know what I'm talking about? Just get away from it all. Maybe I'm preaching to myself. This is my story. I'm telling you the things I've gone through, the things I've thought, the things I've fought, the things that I've suffered. I've wanted to just get away from it all because I'm tired of the pain. I'm tired of the hurt. I said, well, I just won't, I just won't talk to people. <laughs> you ever done that? As a pastor, that's kind of hard. <laughs> I'm going to get Brother Tim to make me an escape door. Well, I got one right back here. <laughs> I have fought these things, these thoughts, these battles, these hurts, these pains. It's easier to hide. It's easier to be a loner. Sure, it's easier. God never said it'd be easy. Walking through seasons of betrayal is never easy. But as a Christian, it's necessary. Necessary. Listen, your testing is not uncommon. The trials that you're going through are not uncommon. Peter said, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. Your your testing is not uncommon. Don't think it, it to be a strange thing. But we must endure through it. It's a hard thing. But God is working in you and through it all. Through the trial, God is conforming you to his death. That you might be the Christian that he can pour his life through. Paul said, it's death for us. You see, we're dying all the day long, but it's life unto you because in our, in our death, in our, in our crucifying of the flesh, when everything is coming against us and through the, the hardships and the crushing, the life of Christ is being manifested for you. I don't know if y'all getting this now. It's, it's when, it's when you're in your most pain, emotionally, spiritually, and yet you still praise them. Mm. It, it's, it's when you're crushed on every side that you still preach the word of God and you still tell others about the Lord. It, it's, it's when Satan has thrown everything he can at you and hurt you to the most degree that you can never be hurt. But you're still going to serve God. You're still going to praise him. And people look at you and say, look at the testimony of that one. I see Christ in them. I see the love of God in them. I see faithfulness in them. I see something that's not of this world. I see God, you see, I, oh, now, now it's, see, see, Mary in Ohio needs to see a church that can still praise God in the darkness. Amen. I'm tired of the surface thing, and you are too. Now, give me, I'm going to take eight minutes left today. I'm going to borrow five more, ten more for tonight, okay? I'm, I'm going to, I wasn't here last week. My wife tells me, she says, you know, you're stacking up the points. So, okay. Betrayal is seen throughout the Bible. Listen to me. Jesus was betrayed by Judas and also by those who cried out, crucify him. John the Baptist, Isaiah was betrayed. Jeremiah, Paul was betrayed. At my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. See, most will go through seasons of betrayal. Listen to me as a child of God, as a Christian. I know I can paint some kind of happy, fluffy message that that, that gives you a false understanding of your journey with God that can make you feel good for the moment, but I'm not doing that 
that right now. I'm trying to prepare you for now and for tomorrow. For now and for tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. Lauren Larson said it. He said living the Christian life this, these days is not easy. He, he wants to give us something that will help us in the journey that God has for us. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do here today. You've got to get a hold of this because the Christian living and the Christian life is not going to get easier. It's going to get harder. I'm trying to tell you. I've seen people that were once on fire for God, hungry for God, serving God now, taking on little by little the image of the world, dressing like the world. Oh, pastor, now you're getting legalistic. No, you know better than that. I'm just saying that our life represents Christ. And if we are in right relationship with the Lord, we're going to want to present ourselves in a way that will glorify God and not flesh and not the devil. Not to be sensual or demonic, James says, or fleshly. I've... My heart breaks, just breaks. And friends and people I have on Facebook that were once on fire for the Lord and now they're living for the flesh. Flesh. Dressing so provocative. And I think, what happened to you? What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you willing to drink of the same cup? Are you willing to be baptized with the same baptism? When I say drink of the same cup, that means I'm not going to go by the way of my friends that are living worldly. I'm not going to go by the way of the devil. I'm not going to go by the way of the world. I'm not going to live by that influence. I'm going to live for God. And whether I have friends or no friends, or people are nice to me or not nice to me, or or, or, or whether I have an easy life or a hard life, I'm going to drink the cup. I will live the gospel of Christ. I will live for the Lord. I may suffer. It might be hard. It might be difficult. But I'm willing to drink the cup. The question is, how do we get through the seasons of betrayal? Genesis 42. Genesis 42, we see that Jacob sent all his sons except for Benjamin to go down to Egypt to buy corn. And in Genesis 42 and 7, Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them, but he acted as a stranger to them and spoke roughly to them. And some commentators would say that this was the way that Egyptian rulers spoke to people. They spoke roughly or harsh to them. But, but you know, this might be our first reaction when we see someone that has deeply hurt us. And I'm not suggesting that this is Joseph's motives of all. Don't get me wrong with this. But we might react harshly to someone that has hurt us in some way because the human side of us wants that person to suffer like we suffered. We want them to hurt like they hurt us. We want to get revenge for what they've done to us. Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. And Joseph knew they were not spies, but he wanted to test them to see if their character had changed over the years. He wanted to see if they had come to the point of remorse of the evil that they had done. Genesis 42 and 17. So he put them all together in prison three days. Now to some folks, that would feel pretty good. Make them sweat it out. Oh yeah, I'll pay you back. I'll get you back for this. We want to make them agonize over this. You're going to pay for all the hurt that you've caused me. But then in verse 18 it says, Then Joseph said to them the third day, Do this and live, for I fear God. And so we find that the fear of God moves Joseph. And Joseph knew that there must be forgiveness. He knew that he had to forgive his brothers for what they had done to him. If we want God's mercy upon us, then we must be willing to forgive those who have hurt us. We must be willing to forgive those who have harmed us. The merciful shall be shown mercy. Genesis 42 and 24. And he turned himself away from them and wept. And there was a deep passion in his heart. This was something that Joseph had to go through. He had to get through this. He had to deal with it. He couldn't just sweep it under the rug. He had to confront it. Genesis 43 and 30. Now his heart yearned for his brothers. Do you see the progressive work here? Do you see the progressive work of God in Joseph? In dealing with his brothers for forgiveness, for healing, for restoration, Joseph wanted to be reconciled deep in his heart. He still loved God. God was working in his heart. God was dealing with him. Amen. 
Do you, how do you know if you've gone through the seasons of betrayal? Let me say this and I'm going to quit. When you come to the place, how do you know? How do you know you go through seasons of betrayal? When you come to the place to where you know God was in control the whole time. Mm. When you come to that place where you know that God was in control the entire time, regardless of what happens. No matter what you've been through, you know that God was in control the entire time. Joseph said in Genesis 45 and 5, But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me here before you to preserve life. Joseph understood the purpose, what the devil meant for my destruction. God turned it around. And God used it for His glory. And God was preparing me. And God was working in me to use me to save a nation. To save the people of God. And maybe God is working in you right now so that God can use you to help a person in need. Or to minister to someone who is going through a difficult time. Or someone that is lost that you might be able to win them to Christ and witness the gospel to them. See, God is working in us today to prepare us for tomorrow. We're just thinking about today. We're just trying to get through today. But God is thinking about tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day just like God was preparing Gideon you mighty man of valor well what if God is trying to prepare you what if God is trying to use you what if God is trying to do something in you and sometimes we can sit there like a bump on a log it doesn't do anything it just it's just there Maybe God is trying to prepare and sanctify this body of Christ or this church to withstand the evil day. To be able to minister to those on the streets, those that are suffering, to be able to reach those children in their broken homes and dysfunctional homes. And we have to care. It's, it's not so much, Pastor, what can you give me today? 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 Why don't you come and say, what can I do for you today? What can I give today? What can I do for you today? How can I reach somebody today? How can I minister today? How can I be used today? We got the whole thing backwards. We've got it to where the, the church is spoon fed these days and they just want to come and get their little feeding and move on and have their merry life. But no, that's not God's plan and purpose. Yes, we are to fellowship. Yes, we are to congregate. Yes, we are to hear the preaching and teaching of the word of God. Yes, we're not to, we're, we're to, we're to, not to forsake ourselves from assembling together as a matter of some. Yes, I understand all of that, but there's more. God is trying to, to prepare and sanctify and work in you and work through you to prepare you for tomorrow because God says I've got somebody over there that's bound, that's in drugs, that's an alcoholic that needs help we we gotta get our eyes just off of me off of my wants and my feelings and God is could you go through what Joseph went through I've sat there and meditated upon this and, and I'm not that good of a Christian I think to go through that We'd be yelling and screaming, we want our rights. I didn't do anything wrong. You ask Brother Don, everybody's innocent in jail. Isn't that right, brother? All right, let me, Abby, would you come? I'm, let's, we are all called to drink the cup. I, I want you to know this, whether you realize it or not. We are all called to drink the cup that Jesus drank. Are you willing to drink of that cup? Are you willing to be baptized with the same baptism? Understand, the betrayal opens up something of God to where He can do a deep work in our hearts that otherwise might not happen. We have to be determined in our hearts that we're going through no matter what. We're not going to stand back. We're not going to shy away. We're not going to build up walls. We're not going to hide. But instead... We are going to go through these seasons of betrayal regardless of what they are, regardless if they hurt. There there just might be some things that you have to deal with. You have to confront it. 
There might be unforgiveness in your heart. There might be some things you need to surrender to God. There might be some things that you're holding back. God wants you to surrender today. I said, God, in prayer, I just said, Lord, open up every door, every chamber, every closet of my heart. Go in all the crevices and the recesses of my heart. I said, I don't want any Jebusites there. I don't want any Canaanites there. I don't want anything to lodge itself in my heart. I just want Jesus there. Let's stand together, please. God might be allowing this in your life to prepare you, to help you, and to help others in a time of famine. Young people, get a hold of this. God might be preparing you for the famine to help others, to feed others the Word of God, to minister to them. There's no telling what God is preparing you for, but are you willing? Let me ask you, church, let me ask you this. Will you forgive others? Listen, I, I, I love everyone. Now, there are some people I get along with better than other people. I, I admit it. There are some people, I, you know, I may not be excited about the direction they're taking with God, but I still love them. And, and we've turned that into to hate and bitterness. That's not hate or bitterness. That's just that I'm just concerned. That's all. But, you know, God is Lord, and I just pray God take care of them. God take care of them. Are you willing to go through seasons of betrayal? Will you be the servant that God is calling you to be? Would you do that? Would you do that? With every head bowed, I just want to ask you. Every eye closed, just listen to me for a moment. Are you willing to be the servant that God is call, calling you to be? Even if it means suffering. Even if it means betrayal. Even if it means being hurt. Are you willing? Are you willing in your heart? Will you drink the cup? Because Jesus went through it. And he went through it for us. Are you willing? See, no one can force you. The choice is yours. Regardless of how hard life might be, or whatever the trial that God is putting you through, will you surrender it all to him right now? My beloved, listen. Will you surrender it all to him? Whatever or however hard or difficult, will you trust God? Will you trust him anyway? Listen, God sees you And God loves you And God is working in you now But God is also working in you now for tomorrow Some of you have heavy burdens Some of you are grieving in your heart Some of you are dealing with emotional pain Spiritual struggles, hardships I know this I know the hardships I deal with them myself. I am with you. But I'm also telling you the answer. I'm giving you the antidote. Joseph went through it. And others went through it. Don't hold on to the grudge. Don't hold on to the bitterness. I want you to learn to trust God. Hallelujah. I want to open this altar. And I just want to call the church to come. I want you to find a place to pray and to pour your heart and your burdens out to the Lord. Just pour it out to God. Say, Lord, I'm asking you to do this work in my life. I'm willing right now. Come on. Come on. It's okay. It's all right. You're not coming to me. You're not going to anybody else. You're just going to Jesus. I'm, you're just taking you to the one because I can't, I can't help you really. I can't, but only the Lord can. Only Jesus can. Hallelujah. Abby, would you sing that song for us? Hallelujah. God bless you. I bless you. There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried. Praise God. Can I have some others come and help me pray? George, George, just come. Hey, just praise God. He is here. He wants to give you love. He wants to give you 
Hallelujah. Touch him, God. Touch him right now in the name of the Lord. Oh, God, maybe his heart is broken. I'm just asking God right now. Touch him. Help him, God. Oh, just keep praying for him. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I'm willing to drink the cup. I'm willing to drink the cup. I'm willing, God. I'm willing. I'm willing to drink the cup. Whatever God has for me, I will suffer for the gospel. I will suffer for Christ. Hallelujah. I give my hurt, my pain, my sorrow. I give it all to Jesus. I'm willing to drink the cup. I'm willing to be the servant He's asked me to be. God, I'm asking you to do this work in our hearts right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm asking you, God, touch my sister. Help us, Father. In this journey, in this journey, I'm willing to drink the cup. The same one that Jesus drank. I'm willing to suffer for the gospel. I'm willing to go through trials, betrayal, hardship, loneliness. I'm willing, God, whatever it takes, I'm going to be your servant. I'm going to be your servant. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Prepare me, God. Prepare me. In the name of Jesus. Prepare me, God. Prepare me. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Oh God, I'm willing to drink the same cup. I'm willing to, to suffer for the cause of the gospel. I'm willing, God. You have spared my brother's life. You have brought him back. And for a purpose, God. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I'm willing, Lord. I'm willing to drink the same cup. I'm willing, God. I'm willing. You are the one that restores and forgives and heals. Lord, minister to our hearts today, God. I give it all to you. I give it all to you. Jesus, heal my praise. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I'm willing to drink of the same cup. Hallelujah. Make me willing, God. Make me willing. Touch my sister, Lord. Willing to drink of the cup. I'm willing, Lord, to suffer for the cause of Christ. Touch her, Lord, I pray. Minister to her, Lord, God, and bring healing as we bring our burdens to you, Father. Lord, we love you. We need you. We praise you. Oh God. Hallelujah. God, touch. I pray. My sister, Lord, minister to her heart, God. I pray. Oh Father, in the name of Jesus, I'll drink the cup. I'll be whatever you want. I'll serve you. No matter how hard it is, I'll serve you. I'll serve you. I'll serve you, Lord. No matter how hard it might be. No matter how hard it might be. I'm willing to serve you, Jesus. I'm willing to serve you in the name of the Lord, God. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Strengthen my brother and help him, Lord. You know the need. You know the need. I pray. Minister and strengthen. He needs your strength. Every day, God, he needs your strength. I pray. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll drink the cup. You gotta make it up in your heart, your mind. I'll drink the cup. There's, there's no going back. I'm going to live my life for God. I want to live my life for God. I want to live my life for the Lord. I'll drink that cup. Whatever the sacrifice, however hard, no matter how much pain I'm in, I'm going to serve Him. No matter how difficult life might be, I'm going to serve Him. And I'm going to trust Him. And I know that what the devil means for my harm and my destruction, that God's in control of my life. And therefore God will turn it around and use it for God's glory. And God is preparing me for tomorrow. And God is preparing me for the next day and the next day and the next day. God is preparing me. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus.
Jesus. Oh God, hallelujah. Touch my brother, Lord. Touch my brother, Lord. Touch him, Lord. I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, make him whole. Make him whole, God. Make him whole. Do this, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I rest in God's presence. I rest in His presence. Lord, I pray right now. Speak, Lord. Jesus, fill His heart. Speak, Lord. Fill Him with Your presence, God. Hallelujah. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Hallelujah. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. God's prepared. Touch my sister. Touch Charlotte. God, just touch her heart. Life might be hard. It might be difficult at times. But God, I'll drink that cup. I'll be what you want me to be. Lord, you're preparing me for tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And there might be somebody that's in a famine one day. And you're going to use me to save them. You're going to use me to help them. Oh, God, I pray. God, I pray. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah.